Hey, what is up, Control here, and today's video is going to be one on Timo Sejuani. Just kidding, today we're doing Ash Sej. Uh, really funny joke, Control. I know, it was great. Basically, this list is one that you guys are probably seeing a lot on ladder. It's very, very popular, and one that I decided to pick up and just make a video on because I enjoyed playing it a couple patches ago. And uh, I think a lot of you guys liked it too. So, I just picked this up. Uh, I used my friend Navi's version that he's been climbing with. I think he's like 1800 LP now or something stupid like that. To check, um, let's see, Navi, yeah, 1600. So he's ranked 14 with the deck, basically just one tricking it. And a lot of other people higher up on ladder here are also just playing Ash Sejuani for the most part. Uh, a lot of these guys, like top 25, will queue into quite often, and that's basically what they'll be playing for the most part. And it is a very, very good deck and one that is good to main. I think it's a very, very solid tier one deck that doesn't have any like unwinnable matchups for the most part. You really just have the opportunity to kind of play your game, play with the deck that you want the, the entire game and into a lot of different decks. So you don't really have any issues where it's like, you know, you queue into Ezreal and you're like, I just lose because you can't just like punish them. You can go wide and beat them down on board before they can kind of pop off and win, for example. So it's not like you're playing a control deck where you just sit there and go, oh, OK, I queue Ezreal, I just lose, right? Not that case. This deck could beat anything, which is really, really fun and sweet. And one of the reasons why I think so many people play it. And well, another reason is that it's just so, so powerful right now which is a massive deal. One of the big things about this deck and why it's coming back is because of the Nab rework. That's definitely massive because now your Trapper and the Enraged Jetty won't be stolen and the Omen Hawk buffed units won't be yoinked from the top of your deck, which is massive as well. The two big things that kind of lead to the deck being good and seeing play again and also just being uh, a lot of minion combat right now. So a lot of these freeze effects from Ash are just very, very powerful. It also just runs, you know, relatively strong cards across the board. So the Freljord package is pretty straightforward. You run a lot of the freeze effects. That's just, you know, a given like double wins, um, Ash, and then you get the flash freezes from the Ash and the Crystal Arrow, triple Brittle Steel, uh, just efficient cards that are very powerful. You got the Archer as well as a unit. Very, very good unit here. Super nice for early game combat. Um, other spells, you got Elixir of Iron, good as the two of, you know, just to protect you up a little bit. Uh, you have Calling Strike, very, very good in the stack. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and one Reckoning. So I guess we can go over just the Noxus cards here because they're kind of what makes this deck go from being okay to actually really, really good and a very, very solid tier one. Maybe even um, the best deck in the game at the moment, I would say, for laddering, potentially. It's it's definitely up there. It's one of the best, at least. So the Culling is very good because with the freeze effects that you have, Ice Veil Archer, Ashes Effect, um, the Harsh Winds on any unit, what you're going to be able to do is be able to Culling any unit away. So think like, uh, I don't know, you say you're playing, it's like a Swain deck, right? You, you go to the late game, they drop a Leviathan. That's their entire turn, turn eight. And you're just like, okay, well, I'm going to play an Ice Veil Archer for two of my actual mana and use three of my spell mana with Calling Strike and uh, buy Leviathan. And that's a very common occurrence. It's something that happens a lot. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of denies in the metagame right now. Not a lot of wills. So this is just very, very powerful. And the fact that does happen a lot. And it is one of the reasons why the deck is good. Next up, Trifurian Assessor. This card is absolutely bonkers in this deck, man. If she gets like an Omen Hawk buff or a buff from an Avaros and Hearth card and, you know, played with a couple of units on board that have five or more power, she's basically just auto winning you the game. This card it will then be good stats and then drawing you a bunch of cards. Even if she's still just a four mana, four, three that draws you, say, like two cards. That is insane. Legends of Ruteria is a game that does not have very much card draw in it in general. I, I think you'll notice that playing a lot of decks, you know, you won't be cycling a ton. Uh, you know, there definitely are decks that you can have more, you know, cycle heavy focus, like think like Ezreal Karma later on with Rummage drawing you four, for example. But in most cases, you're not having a lot of cards that say the keyword draw on them that uh, that are good or really worth playing, right? You just look, there's uh, there's not like a ton that are going to be drawing you more than one, at least in most cases. And, and I mean, if they do, they usually have a downside like Rummage, for example. So having the assessor to be able to draw you multiple cards and not really worry about it is insane. And one of the reasons why this deck gets glued together and just works so, so well, because well, after a couple Hearthguard buffs, or even just with a lot of the units that you have in your deck, she is phenomenal. Best card in the deck, I think. Uh, well, maybe not the best card. I mean, Ash and Sejuani are really good, and you know stuff like Culling is very powerful, but definitely the card that I feel like glues this deck together and makes it go from being good to amazing. Also have Reckoning, which is really good. Right now, we're running this as a 1-up, but it can be a 2 if you want. Very, very powerful against, say, like Vehuinder, any deck that runs a lot of units that are 4 Elias, goes a little bit wide on board. It's just nutty because you're going to have more than one five power unit usually in this game. And then what you'd be able to do with this is even if they can clear one, they usually can't clear two or three. So Reckoning will just go off. You'll wipe the board and be happy. 
Definitely had a couple of situations when I was playing this list uh, where Reckoning was very, very good. I had one game that I didn't keep it, and it was uh, actually kind of sad. And I think that was actually one of my two losses. I'm 10 and 2 overall with the deck, and I think that one game where I mulligan Reckoning, I actually said that was a misplay, and I lost because of it, I believe. And you also have Ferran, which is a very, very good ender in this deck. Uh, very perfect fit for Ferran because this is like a more mid-range deck. It's not a straight aggro deck, so, you know, this draw isn't going to completely cripple your early game. And, you know, the three decimates that you do draw are so, so nice for finishing games off. It's actually just insane. Ferran himself is very powerful, too. He's an 8-mana 8-8 with Overwhelm. And he doesn't really ruin your top end by just being drawn a little bit early because the rest of your deck is relatively cheap, right? So you're not really running into too many issues. You're going to be a deck that does make it to turn 8, so Ferran will basically always be playable. And the Decimates are very good in a lot of cases. This card's rework is so good, and this is kind of the best home for him right now, I think. Very, very solid. Other cards that we didn't really touch on, uh, the Trapper, very, very powerful card. Definitely a card that I keep almost every single time I see it. Uh, the Enraged Jetty early game is so powerful. Uh, the Tavern Keeper, just to heal up some of your units or, you know, your Nexus if you're a little bit damaged, very good. We run it for a similar reason that we do in Team of Sedge in this list. Uh, and Bjerg, just to draw cards, very, very good uh, when played, you know, before the Hearth card. So you can just, you know, pick up that Hearth card, pick up that Sedge, pick up that Ferran, pick up that Ash, yada, yada. Very, very good card. I like it as a two of as well. Uh, again, got this list from my friend Navi. I think it's a very well built one. I think that uh, he's kind of shows a lot of the good cards to run and kind of cut some of the ones that are decent, but less good. Like um, let's let's look at these, for example. This is one of the questions I got a lot when I was playing the deck. Why don't you run Preferring Glory Seeker? Very good card in some matchups, but also very bad in others. A lot of decks are going to have ways to ping this off and kind of just ruin her efficiency. She also clutters up the two drop slot. I feel like the Sentry for card draw and the Ice Veil Archer Definitely a little bit better in cards that I would prefer to see myself. As far as Mulligan goes, I think keeping reactive spells is decent if you have a good hand. So I think like, uh, say you have like an Omen Hawk, Sentry, Trapper into Ash Curve, very good. Uh, but that's four cards, so I guess you wouldn't keep Brittle Seal then. So you're missing like one of those and that, that would be fine, you know. Elixir Vine, you're generally good to keep with like Ash, basically any unit you want to protect. But the key units you really want, I think, are like Omen Hawk, Sentry, Ash, and, uh, and Trapper. Those are the big ones usually. You can also look to um, to keep Ice Veil Archer if you're playing a matchup that has a lot of combat early. And, you know, you're looking to freeze like a Zed on turn three or something when your opponent's on odds. It's pretty good. Other than that, Calling Strike could be a very good keep in matchups, uh, say against like a Swain, for example. Or, you know, anytime you're going to feel like you need to have this for your removal with a freeze effect. That's basically when I would keep this. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's basically the mulligan. Again, I, I was talking about Reckoning as well against like Dehumander, for example. This card should be a keep. It's very, very good uh, in specific scenarios. When you're not really going to have any contention for um, your opponent having five plus our allies and you have a, you know, early five plus higher ally, I think like an Ash you can play and then play the Reckoning on five, for example. Very solid. Super, super powerful. That's about it. Very good deck. Uh, one of the super solid to climb with and I think very straightforward as well. There definitely are some nuances to it, especially in the way that uh, you mulligan and how you build the deck. But I think overall, this is a very, very solid tier one deck that isn't like the easiest deck in the game, but it's also not that difficult and you'll, you'll get the idea of how to play it relatively simply uh, and more in a straightforward fashion than you would with say like Ash, uh, sorry, than you would to say like Timo and Sedge. So give it a spin if you want something that's a little bit different, but still plays with Sedge Wani. And thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will catch you guys tomorrow. The deep, okay. So I'm going to guess against the deep, one of the things I want to do is like save the Culling Strike plus Sedge stuff for the Nautilus guy later on. Early on, what's important? There's a couple things that are probably pretty important. I'm just not too sure if I actually want to keep the calling and such is my problem. I might just want to look for like an earlier hand. I think it's maybe just like this. It's not quite a bit better, I'd say. Just because of the Omen Hawk, really. I feel like having a Sejuani is really big at the same time, though. It's kind of weird. This trade's good for him, though. So it's kind of off, but okay. Give you dust or something on the nerf cards? No, no. Just because everything's so achievable from a free to play perspective, they don't actually offer any kind of, uh, Give me stuff. Stuff makes what I call it, anything for you really, if you do go ahead and uh, get the card or deck that you're playing nerfed. Did he really have triple dredger start? That is like probably the most disgusting start I've seen from a deep deck. Imagine if they were all two ones. Actually, crazy. Uh, the buff on the accessory is really big. Because if I hit the energy jetty, draw two is good enough. 
So I'm pretty happy about that. Nice to see me playing a balance deck instead of abusing Teemo for once. You know, I, I don't always like to switch it up, but sometimes it will. So he should not attack here just because he wants to block my cards usually. Salvage, sure. My, my mission today is going to be trying to keep the microphone close to my mouth when I talk. Every single time I go to like watch my YouTube videos and try to record my stuff, all that I notice is that I cannot just stick to that. Where I, I feel like every single video I record, there's like some game where I'm over here talking or just something like that. So today's goal for me is going to be keep my mouth close to the microphone. This is great. Pop deck the side, okay? Not bad. I have no calling though. Kind of fine. You can open attack and draw. He's basically deep already, which is kind of bad for us, but you can't really do too much here about that. So we kind of just have to take it, I think. Um, I mean, I'm basically just going to do 12 damage already, so I can pass here. Just see what he has. Because he has to play cards, otherwise my open attack is just so powerful. How good is... I mean, Reckoning is like kind of okay here. I wouldn't say it's great though by any means. Is it just a Sajuani type look here? Could Reckoning Trapper and technically have open attack lethal? He could also just play like any card that says Toss from his hand right now. Like Jettison or I guess another Salvage. And that would mean that the Abyssal Eye is not in range, so it's kind of bad. I think I maybe just play smaller things here. Kind of feels better. I don't actually have to play Sajuani yet. Because if he can't actually develop anything here with a 2 mana, he's kind of boned. Because my open attack is going to mean that at least 4 units can, uh, can act, which is really, really strong. I will just like YOLO the, the Archer and not really care about the value that it gets. I think is where I'm at with this right now. Grasp, okay. Unfortunate. Can't do anything about that. Huh? No spell mana. Uh, this Reckoning should be good now. Okay, so I can open for 10 if we want. I think if I top deck the Enrage Jetty, I'll play that first. Otherwise, I'm going to take my 10. Okay. So Devourer of Depths is the best card you can play here. I could also just attack for 10. I, I feel like I do want to go for the Yeti plus Sedge play, though. Like, it just feels a lot better than anything else I can really do here. Reckoning is the coolest animation in the game. It's pretty cool, yeah. Definitely a good card and one that I would say makes this deck fun to play. That being said, in this version from Navi, he only runs it as a one of, but I, I do think it's a really impactful card and one that, in a similar fashion to like Intimidating Roar, can kind of just get stuck in your hand. But when it does work, it really does work and pops off super, super hard. Uh, can I share with you the deck code? Exclamation mark deck in the chat should be the code. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. It should still be fine. So we still got our 10 damage in here. Uh, I mean, he's played all of his one drops, right? All the, the dredgers are gone, so it's not really an issue or anything. Get some stuff like that. Such level up is something that you basically will never look for in this deck. It just does not happen ever, really. We have Ash leveled up for sure with this hand. It's just kind of a matter of drawing an Ash, really. That's about it. What's well, vulnerable? Vulnerable is like challenge, but what you do with vulnerable is you, if you make one of your opponent's minions vulnerable, you can challenge him with any of your units uh, during your attack phase. It's one of the new Rise of Tides keywords. It's a pretty cool one, if you ask me. Face me coward. Another one. That's actually what he, I guess because of like an elixir of iron then is why he's doing that. Sure. That feels kind of off though, but whatever. I mean, I don't pass here, I don't think. Pretty sure the play is still developed, just so I'm ahead on board. That's kind of good. If I play Harsh Winds, I can't play for on. So I might just, like, not care about that. 
This Ferran is usually a death sentence for him. So he blocks 7 2 into 5 5. He's at 3. I don't think the winds is really good anymore. I can maybe like brittle seal here. And that's gonna fine. But I mean I'm not gonna harsh winds now that I have Ferran, right? This doesn't make sense. Could also argue that I play Ferran before combat. I don't think it really changes anything now. I really don't think that it does anything at all. He just develops like a Nautilus or something and blocks it. Cool. This way at least I get to see him spend his mana first, maybe. So I generally prefer doing is just like seeing my opponents. Play their stuff first, and then I can uh, play my cards reactively. Which I mean, we're basically locked into this, but he doesn't know that we are, right? That's the, the whole idea. So he spends his twelve mana before knowing what I'm spending my entire turn on, effectively. The so average play. And we played a good card. Super nutty in this deck, man. It's actually an insane card. Any deck that uh, has a Noxus in it that can kind of just run this card and utilize it as a finisher will find a lot of success with it because it is just such a great kind of effect. In these sort of like endgame situations, it's basically just like draw three good cards and play them. Which is a pretty strong effect if you ask me. I'm also not dead here to... Atrocity because of the winds. This is really good. If I have to double decimate, then I'm not going to win here with this. I could alternatively just like harsh winds, brittle seal. Like the ash, maybe. I feel like it's almost better to not play these here and just wait. Because if I want to play one, I have to play two to win this round. And then if I play the second one, I don't have mana to play the wins for the atrocity. So seems like it's wrong to just um, play these fast. All my cards can block them though. I mean, the order that I do this in isn't really relevant, right? It's a 10. Did I maybe throw here by doing this now? I may be three, right? He challenges Ash usually. My cards lose attack now. Maybe I was like reading too hard into Atrocity. I don't know. Because I still lose to healing, right? Uh, it's just that I, I don't lose to Atrocity, I guess then. So I can just do something like this and then... Wins Braille Seal? I mean... I also only get to play two of these in one round, so... I'm pretty sure I just turbo through. But like, at the same time, I don't know if it really matters. If I don't lose to Atrocity, then how's he gonna do direct damage? It's only really gonna be like a... I guess Grasp? He needs to heal for more than two, right? So if I just do this and then play another one, I mean, I usually just win. Sure. Uh, that's kind of scary, actually. Okay, GG. I, I think it was fine, honestly. I don't think it was really that bad how I did it with the atrocity in mind. I, I feel like it was still right because I, I don't think I was going to lose that round. It would be another grasp, and then I would still have harsh winds to stall with afterwards, so it's not really that big of an issue. I think it was like, uh, it was fine for the most part. GG's. Maybe just playing like too passive though, because this deck isn't really one that needs to be played that slowly. Okay, swing as cool. So, I mean, this is a card you just keep, I think. Just keep that in card draw. I don't like the tavern keeper here, I don't think. Ash double sentry calling, okay. I think the thing is they usually won't play the Swain that early anyways though, but should be fine.
The thing about using Kato instead of Hearth Card. Uh, in my experience, Kato is just kind of bad. Hearth Card is just kind of good. The games that I've lost to Kato are very rare, whereas like Hearth Card just being a 5-5 that you plop down and having a ridiculous effect has been very powerful. Against me at least. Is what I found. The draw, cool. The trap is set. The trap is set, gentlemen. The only problem with this line is they don't have spell man here. That's uh, about the only issue we're gonna be running into here. He's going wide here, so into that I probably just play the archer freeze E three two. Uh, over developing the ash. I don't really feel like there's a good reason to play her yet when Fervor just farms me so hard still. It just seems like it's kind of an int to do that. Make your sure. Uh, I can do this if I want here. Elixir is probably fine, honestly. Saving this for late game is also really good as well. It's just like one of the most broken cards in this matchup, from my perspective at least. And now we're kind of in a weird spot because I want to play the Yeti. And I kind of want to play Ash. She does die on board though, so it's not worth it for sure. So it should kind of be one of those where I just play Hearth Card Pass, I think. Because this is not a good situation for the Yeti. Ash is not good enough yet. Um, basically just play the 5-5, five, five, say deal with it. That's about all I feel like doing here really. Any Leviathan should you run in the Swain deck? As many as you can. You could run six Leviathans in your swing decks. You probably would. So maybe like four or five, not six. That's a little bit too much. But you would run a decent amount of them for sure. That's uh, a guarantee I can make for you. Pass here. I don't really have a reason to do anything. Yurg is kind of good. That was a thicky. Yeah, I play against BBG a lot usually. Okay. Pass. Can pass back. It's kind of fine. If I use the Sedge, I lose my only freeze effect. It's kind of an interesting thing. So it's not really like that great to just have to utilize that. So I pass back, play Yeti, I think, and then go... Maybe Sajuani into something he plays to make this big plus calling strike. I just kind of want to hold that as long as I can, really. So my attacks right now are still kind of whack. I guess it's just like that that's kind of bad. Can attack with five fives, maybe. I feel like just cleaning up the weak stuff and like overpowering his board is probably just going to be the look. Like, yeah, he gets better trades into my smaller units, but I think that it's still better to get value from these. So I can kind of just chunk them down. So let's give him the opportunity to, like, flock the 5-5s, five which is basically the only issue here that I'm seeing. Other than that, though, I I'm fine with cleaning up the board. It just means that my units in the future are going to be a little bit better to have played, and uh, they will do a little bit more thing. Thanks, Chris. God, appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, man. I appreciate it a lot. Really nice of you to say that. Swain is not yet flipped. So I'm kind of confused as to what I want to do here still. I, I almost feel like it's just Trapper over the Bjerg. If I play Bjerg, what am I getting? Um, I'm, I'm thinking like Assessor, Hearthguard, Sedge, or Ferran. Probably better to do this then. Okay, so it's only draw two right now. This is like the ridiculous card in like these slower matchups. It really just like kind of powers you to a whole new level of ridiculousness. And one of the reasons why the deck in general just works and why you utilize Noxus is just because you get the, the stupid like draw 75 card kind of effect very often, I find. That's sand, sure. Oh, I'll just take that, that's fine. Really don't care much about that. It's a leveled up swing. So Sedge into that, it really isn't even that good because if I if I do the Sedgewani into that, then his Leviathan's unchecked. Which is not great for us. I also just don't have freeze effects in this hand, which is kind of weird as far as Ash goes. Okay, I feel like he's almost just in a better spot than we are at this point in time. Rex is fine, so he can attack with those next rounds. I'm um, definitely going to sedge the Riptide Rex then. It's okay. Second sedge, okay. Play the buff one. Hey QC, how you doing, man? Thank you, I appreciate that. You Stream is definitely going well so far. Hit the trade button here real quick. 
Yo, Gibbs, thanks for the Prime, man. Appreciate it. How you doing, dude? Let's uh, see what came. I, um... I don't think I play the Calling Strike on that, honestly. I feel like it's just not good enough. It could be greedy, but I don't think it's worth it. 7-5 Ash, though. That's kind of worth. Play the 7-5 Ash and try to draw through here, I think, is the play. Edge, Archer, Hawk, okay. Not bad. We can send the voice wing for sure. Question now is like, do I sedge hit? Um, I feel like it's just a no for me. I'm just gonna play Hawk, I think it's chill. Hawk is good, okay. So double flock maybe, or just one even. And like another ping for next round or something. Still fine. I, I feel like just attacking is just not that great for us here. Sure, that's fine. It's got seven mana left, so I could just use the flash freeze here to, to just like get the Swain out of the way right away. I could also just use the Fury of the North here to buff the Ash. I'm just leaning towards more here. Okay. Suns the Ash. He won't have attack buffs, so like the Archer here plus the Calling Strike should be good. Only problem is he can play another one. But I think it's fine. He has it, he has it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be happy with this, I think. But I don't really think there's cards in his deck that are gonna give him the ability to uh, pop with that, really. River, sure. The sun's this edge as well. Look at it. Yeti, so he connects with his 2 2 here. Our trades are actually okay. They're not bad. Play Trapper, I think. Uh, is it the best trade? 5 5 there. Forward's 4 4 2 there. 2 2 here. Two, and then I guess like an Omen Hawk value trade instead because I don't want to draw Yeti. I want to draw something better. Like Ferran or an Assessor. I almost feel like attacking is kind of wrong from. Could be, I could be incorrect about that, but it almost feels like it's off. I probably actually should have kept something around with the flash freeze, right? That was probably wrong from me. But I, I do just get to play this now, so we are just like solidly ahead. That'll be about it. He can block uh, zero two into Ash. So I don't have lethal here, I don't think. Pretty sure I won't have lethal at least. Why are you here? Can you frostbite in a unit again? Oh no, that's a three, so I can't just do this then. Okay. That's a weird block. Still alive with two. Um, I can't do anything about that right now. Did you say that's okay? So I was going to say I could lose to Leviathan, but obviously he can't play that now with the amount of mana he has. You can. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So I should have used the, fra oh, the flash freezer then to level the ash up. My bad. Definitely misplay. Hey, Bang, you're doing well, man. How are you? And I, I agree, it didn't seem like a very good attack for him, for sure. Um, you can't play the Swain now. So we should be fine. So Fervorous is out. Uh, am I supposed to play Tavern Keeper now? So I don't lose uh, damage right away? Has he played three Fervorous? I think he's only played two. Played two. I think I'm supposed to do this. To the you can play a Swain, Prime Ice Attack. None of my units are back row, so we can't freeze him. The time is right. now. I'll lead us to victory. 
and then Ash's Ashlings. Just because then we won't lose to like the third fervor, maybe. So I think it's a good play. Did you? Kind of the close one. Definitely back and forth for the most part of the game. But I think like calling, holding the culling as long as I did is actually good. That was one thing that I think was um, smart about that game. For sure. That's a throwback. Reckoning's like kind of good. I don't think I keep it though. I think it's just a sentry look. Give me my card draw. Trapper's super nice too. Riddle Seal, not so much. Probably one of the worst cards that I could have in this matchup. Would be my guess at least. Hearth Guard though. That's a card. Gotta love Hearth Guard in these slower matchups. Absolutely just takes over. That's honestly all that it really does. The card just gets plopped down and it's like, hey, all the cards in your deck are buffed. I honestly have fond memories of, uh, you know, the first couple days when I played this game because Hearth Guard was a 5 mana 5-6 and the metagame is a lot different than it is now in closed beta. And this card was like by far the best card in the game. You would have like all of these Fralyard control matchups going on and people would just like basically FF on curve if they saw a Hearth Guard come down. Kind of weird how much uh, things have changed while still staying relatively similar to how they are right now. Hello, one mana, five, five. Hello, other trapper card. All right, well, we're playing a lot of five fives, so that's good. Got to get a Teferian Assessor that will hopefully be buffed. Be fine. Just win damage. Maybe recommendations for Timo list in the meta. Um, Timo Sage, man. Timo Sage. Rank 1 NA is also playing Timo plus um, Timo Elusives. Basically, it's Wayfinders. Attack this 3 through here. So, that's definitely a good shout as well if you're looking for that um, with the Wayfinder list. is good. I personally have had a really tough time playing it and I have not had too much success. Uh, I think it's just because I don't understand the playstyle well enough with Elusives, maybe. And it's just maybe not that forgiving, and I try to play it uh, in, in a way that just isn't correct, potentially. Hard to say now. It's a tragic draw because uh, we're playing Hearth Guard this turn, and then the Assessor would draw a card off yourself. Kind of sucks, but it's all good. He's passing here. This is almost always going to be a Renation bait turn. Unless he just jams a Swain. Okay. Well, I hate to do this to him. We can spend his mana first, I guess. He's never going to be able to level up the Swain uh, at like 1 out of 12 here. So this card's just going to get culling and he's going to be upset about it. I think that I just start with the Enraged Jetty though. Play this turn slow. Could like hold the, the culling strike too. Just take 3 draw here. But I think that I'm always going to be able to cash this in because my units aren't really going to die here. Oh, played. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm going to throw that right back at him and he's not going to be too happy about that I don't think. So, so YouTube comment on my latest video about a possible in-depth video for Timo Sajuani. Oh uh, yeah, I was uh, I talked about that in the video today. So I was considering doing that just because I've been making a lot of content on it and I've been getting a lot of questions about the deck. So I was considering going over it and uh, you know how I think you should mulligan a lot of decks, how you think you should play the deck in a lot of cases, that kind of stuff. Uh, basically just like a video where I talk about stuff more so than play was my idea. One flock and glimpse, sure. It's uh, perfectly fine if you ask me. Play Archer here to keep my cards healthier. I don't think it really matters though. He's no mana for Renation. Play you when it's going live so you can abuse it before it becomes a meta. Um, okay. I mean, even if I make a video on it, it's not going to be any more crazy than it is right now because all the people who follow me have already definitely seen Timo Sajiwani be played. So it's not like it's going to be uh, any more popular than it is right now. Return to us. Oh man, the classic rekindler. Okay. I mean, the Swain dies on attack, so that's not very good. The rekindler doesn't get a good trade here. Should definitely start with this for sure. We know that. Let's do that. Uh, buff Tavern Keeper, Omen Ox, okay. 
Probably just a tavern keeper. Ah, she'll die to the rekindler if I play her and try to attack with her next rounds. Hmm. I can just straight up sedge the swain. Let's do that. I don't think I really create the meta game. I usually play stuff that's actually like fairly off meta for the most part. I usually just find something fun and they just keep on playing it is generally what I do with this game. I don't think I'm too concerned with how the trades are going to be working here for the most part. Mm, yeah, that should be fine. He's going to get some value trades for sure. Or maybe like one. Yeah, that should be fine. Maybe just pull a swain with a smaller unit and try to like just like push as much damage here as I can. Could have been a look for sure. I don't know how much more exactly I would have got in, but... Could have. I'm seeing a lot more Teemo decks. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, rank 1 NA is playing Teemo in his deck, right? It's a Teemo um, elusive Wayfinder deck, so for sure it's good. And I mean, um, I think I've done my part as well, um, like you guys are saying, to kind of dispel the whole Teemo is bad type of myth. So... Chillin, don't commit too much more because Ruination is still really good from here. Definitely enough to blur backs it. Uh, problem for his him is I have six cards to redevelop with, so I mean it's still kind of a loss. That's kind of why like the um, the Ash Sedge matchup is so hard for Swain. Any kind of an SI Swain control deck at least. Like yes, you're gonna have rekindlers to pull more Swains, but the problem is just gonna be calling strikes and the freezes at the end of the day, right? Like it's just so easy to deal with Swain or Leviathan with those cards. So after testing Ash Sedge, would I say it's a balance deck or not? Uh, it's definitely strong. I would probably say it's straight up just like one of the strongest, if not the strongest deck to play right now for ladder. Holistically, at least. I mean, you get a little bit of room for deck options. It's just overall very powerful. Shuts down a lot of strategies, but I, I wouldn't really say it's overpowered. Like it's at, we were talking about this a little while ago. Like people were asking me if I think it's S tier or anything like that. I, I think it's like definitely solid tier one deck, but I don't think it's S tier. I think a lot of that comes from Sejuani just being so powerful as a champion. Um, you know, a couple metas ago, she was, um, what I would consider the best champion in the game. And, and even right now, I mean, she's she's popping up and showing why she's so good. The one, I can't do anything about that. Can Brittle seal this to keep my 6-5 alive. But I think Sejuani is a large part about that. And I mean, the freeze effects are just a little bit too efficient, I think. And Culling Strike is obviously one of the, the big kind of enablers. And I, I guess just like the whole Noxus package in general in this deck is why it's so strong. If you, if you add any other faction and try to make it work with this Ash type of vibe, it just won't work. The thing is, like, the Cullings are so core. The, the Trefarian Assessor for the card draw is one of the dumbest things in this deck and one of the reasons why it actually does do what it does. And, uh, I mean, Reckoning plus Ferran are very good as well. Uh, obviously being more towards, like, the techie side for cards. But still very powerful. Passes. I can get some buffs in if I want here. one should be fine i think said she's one of the most balanced champions i think she's just very powerful overall um I, I think even something like nerfing her to make it so when she's leveled up she can't have her effect be triggered in the same rounds would be pretty fair because that's how most champions work said not the same way though said just gets to to go and do her fun said stuff right away and that's one of the reasons why she's definitely uh very very powerful Leveled up Swain Poggers in the chat. Moxus is the best reason to change my mind. I don't know about that. Definitely had its uh, it's time to shine though for sure. I'm probably is calling the Thresh so there's less to block. Should develop here though. He only has 8 mana so he can't renation after this. Seven five is better than a six four. Change my mind. Today, Ash, you'll see true leadership. That egg. Did it move? Ah, the miracle of life. I think I have my hawk over Tavern Keeper. I don't know if I'm missing anything here. I only need one unit to go into win. When Ash attacks, he won't be able to block with stuff. I guess I would just double freeze anyways at the start, so I should just pass here actually, instead of doing anything else. 
Fervor, okay. Uh, I keep calling that then, so the fervor doesn't go off. I could also just heal the ash, which I should probably just do instead. That maybe makes more sense. Yeah. Pulling the Thresh. I don't know if it really matters. Uh, now I will. But I like to do things like after my opponents do things for the most part. I don't like to be proactive with my cards when I don't have to be. Usually if you're the one like playing your cards first, it's because you're in a position where you're not going to win. Like he is here. Whereas for us, we can kind of just chill. We're not like required to do anything because we're kind of just going to win the game. My aim is true. Yeah. That's about it. Uh, next region is Targon, I believe, yeah. On the 18th, I think, is uh, when it's going to happen. I want Ivern in this game, man. I've been uh, binging Ivern on League. Been, like, non-stop playing him. And I really want to be able to play Ivern in, uh, in Ringtheran now. 